In this video, we are going to be looking at the properties of some of the functional groups that we have in this chapter. First, we're going to be looking at the properties of alcohols. So, nowadays, hand sanitizers is one of the most common things that we're using because of the current pandemic that is happening in our country. Understand that hand sanitizers are typically 60% volume per volume, but can be as high as 85% volume per volume alcohol. So please be careful that if you put hand sanitizer in your hands, because alcohols are flammable, your hands can actually catch on fire. So please understand that um, hand sanitizers that contain alcohol are a fire hazard. Understand that we also need to talk about the classification of alcohols. And alcohols can be classified as primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, or tertiary alcohols. What determines if an alcohol is primary, secondary, or tertiary is the number of carbons that is attached to the carbon that is holding the OH. So I'm going to now highlight the carbon atom that contains the OH, and we're going to see that in the case of a primary alcohol, we have only one more carbon attached to that carbon that contains the OH. In the case of a secondary alcohol, as you can see, the carbon that is attached to an OH is bonded to one, two carbon atoms. They don't need to be methyls. They just need to be carbon atoms um, that contain hydrogens. And lastly, if we have a carbon atom that is bonded to OH, N is bonded to one, two, three carbon atoms. That's known as a tertiary alcohol. This classification is important because we are going to utilize it for when we talk about reactions in this chapter. When it comes to solubility of alcohols, specifically in water, understand that alcohols, because they contain that polar hydroxyl group they can form hydrogen bonding events when they are placed in water now understand that one of the things that happen is that carbon um, alcohols that have one to three carbon atoms are very soluble in water the minute that we have four or more carbons then the solubility is going to be decreasing. To give you guys an example, the molecule that we have here is ethanol. And ethanol, it is soluble in water. If we compare it to the molecule that we have below, that contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is one octanol one octanol because it has a lot of carbon atoms more than four um, it is insoluble in water and the idea of why it is insoluble is because these carbon atoms that are boxed once you get at least the rule of thumb in organic chemistry is five carbon atoms or more once you have five carbon atoms in a row even though you may have a functional group that is polar when it comes to solubility having that many non-polar characters so this that is box has non-polar character is going to in a way overcome the ability of the molecule to hydrogen bond so to give you guys a specific example, in table 12.1 in your textbook, it actually outlines the solubility of some alcohols in water. So as you can see, methanol, ethanol, 1-propanol, one 1-butanol one are going to be mostly soluble in water. Once we get to 1-pentanol, again, that 5 carbon atoms in a row, we see that solubility decreases. The next group or the next 
characteristic that we need to talk about will be the solubility of phenols. I already mentioned to you guys that phenols are going to be molecules that contain a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group. When it comes to phenols, understand that they are going to act differently than other carbons. Because one of the things that it is observed that if you put a phenol in water, it actually makes what is called a phenoxide ion, which is this structure that you have on the right side of the equilibrium arrows. So phenoxide atoms are going to be what result from the acid-base reaction that is going to happen between water and phenol. In this case, phenol is going to act as an acid and water is going to be acting as a base. So, the phenoxide ion is going to be the conjugate base of phenol and the hydronium ion is going to be the conjugate acid of the water. In general, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that understand that phenols are more acidic compared to other alcohols. And that's a special feature that they have. So understand that this reaction in water only happens for phenols. Regular alcohols are not able to be donating a proton to water and doing this reaction.